Art is life. Art imitates life. I need everyone to grab their water <laughs> bottle or oh, cup. I, what else do people drink water out of? River. Barrels. Rivers. Streams. Grab your stream and we will get going. Go outside in the rain and drink it. Hi, welcome to the video. My name's Lee. I am a full-time artist. I am in art sales. This is James. He has watched me grow my whole business and we are going to answer some questions about running an art business, starting your own business, how to do it, what the heck's going on, and that's kind of it. That's we, a good We summary. will not yeah. be branching off of that no subject. No way. Not even I a little. I refuse. Me too. Uh, everyone grab your water. This might be a long one. You're going to want to be hydrated. Why not uh, double task? I wanted to say kill two birds with one stone, but I hate that saying. <laughs> Cheers. Let's begin. Do we have to finish the water to begin? Mm hmm. James's water bottle is a little bigger than mine. <laughs> but hi, welcome to the video. I asked my patrons for some questions regarding running an art business, starting an art business, uh, business questions. These are typically questions I avoid. Like, All I will die time. if I answer yeah. them. I did ask James slash he offered to join me and try and answer these questions that I've been avoiding my whole lifetime. I think Lee's also just not good at answering them because she's like, I don't know. I just did it. Yeah, that that's why I don't answer them because I feel like I can't help someone. Yeah, so I'll try to help fill in the blanks. He's going to facilitate. Our first question is from Moon Bunny Draws. They say, hey Lee, I want to know if there's a right time for starting an art business. Is there a specific number of followers I should have? What if I don't have the resources to produce physical copies of my art yet? I'm at a stage where I don't hate my art and I love, I'd love to start selling things. Bummer, the first one's hard. Um, I don't think there's a right time to start an art business. I don't think there's a certain amount of followers you need because starting an art business, you can just make art and sell it from your house. You don't have to make products if you're not ready yet. Um, finding manufacturers is kind of a full another thing that you don't need to get into when I started my business I was just doing commissions I was just selling art I just had watercolors and paper and then I reused shipping supplies to mail it so I didn't have anything fancy and I had zero followers as long as you put yourself out there that's the right time just any time yeah and I mean, starting a business with no followers is also a learning experience to just create it and slowly learn without a lot of mistakes you can make because people are piling on orders on you and you don't know what's happening. That's scary. Yeah. Also, I'm sure there's just a regular process for when you start your business. Obviously, not everybody's going to buy it. And then over time, as long as people like what you're doing, they'll do it. They'll buy it. I don't think what was part of it. So there's no specific number. There's no specific number of followers. What if I don't have the resources to produce physical copies of my art yet? So you can sell your original art if you're comfortable with that. Yeah, just do originals and sell them. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be fancy. Um, I find that people really, really like commissions. They like personalized stuff. If that's a route that you feel comfortable doing, I think people are willing to pay more for that than just a piece of original art sometimes. I don't know if this is, I don't know what the questions are, but like Lee didn't start with original art. She just did commissions and then mm -hmm. people wanted her art. Yeah. It took me a year or two before I started selling my own original art or copies of my art. And I started very, very small and I made everything at home until I started making stickers. Do you think that answered that question? Yeah, sure. Okay. Anusha. Hi. I know. I know that. Okay. Hello. <laughs> How do you manage all your creative ventures in your life, business, videos, personal life, etc., and not get overwhelmed or creatively burned out? How do you manage your time and creative energy? So I am actually a failure at this. Are you? Yeah, so I had to hire this guy to help me balance it. I was at a point where my business was small enough for a long time where I could manage it myself, and then it got a little too big and I still tried to manage it myself and I was very burnt out and just pushing through. Yeah, I can't imagine packing orders for a whole day and then the next day I can't imagine you wanting to paint very much. You'd rather yeah. just not do anything. What was really hard, I'm getting off topic, but was like answering emails and doing admin stuff and then I had to paint something pretty mm -hmm. while my brain was on a broken mindset. So that was hard. How do I manage it now? I don't I don't even feel like I was super overwhelmed all the time when I was trying to do it myself. 
Do you feel better now? I need help answering this. Do you feel better now? <laughs> yeah. So what have you implemented? If it were me, I'm not an artist. <laughs> uh, I would break it up into days if it is bothering you. Like whether it's packing orders, answering emails, doing everything like that. And then the next day, don't do any of that mm. and just create. I did have a little schedule where I would answer emails only once a week, which is a little irresponsible for some things, but took care of me pretty well. I was in a good mindset. My emails were in a very bad state, but I was fine. Yeah, there were a lot of emails. <laughs> All the time. I don't know if I have really solid advice for this. Do you think it helps to set time aside? I don't like, do that. Can't? Do you think some people can? Is that worth trying? <laughs> I don't know. Could be. You could try it. She uh, doesn't know. Neither do I. I really enjoy my job, so it doesn't always feel like hard work or I'm exhausted or... Do you ever get stuck creatively? For sure. But I, I even enjoy that. I love to work in my sketchbook even when I'm hating it. I'm like, this is pretty cool though, huh? <laughs> so you're saying just do anything? Yeah, do anything. All right. Anything you feel like you want to do, you should do it. And if deadlines are bothering you, meet the deadlines and then do the fun stuff. How's that? Yeah, that sounds good. Gosh, I'm helpful. Okay. Oh. Uh-oh. KK asks, what are your business goals five-year goal? Also taxes. Just a disclaimer, I will not be speaking on taxes. I have been audited. I am not good at it. I just got an accountant. I just dumped all my financial stuff on this guy. So I know nothing about taxes and I cannot help you. I'm so sorry if you came here for that, but you're not gonna get it. Business goals, I don't have any. Would you like to make more prints? No. You don't wanna make bigger prints? I do wanna make bigger prints. Okay, that could be a goal. I'd like to maybe expand the type of products I make. I don't know what that is, but I'd like to expand. Do you like working the amount you work now? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Maybe someday I could move out of my house studio and have an out of home studio because sometimes I don't like working in my home. That's a good goal. I'd like to, you know, go somewhere sometimes, but sometimes I don't want to. So I don't know if that's actually a goal or not. So you could try to have both. Okay. All right. <laughs> five year goal. Five year goal. Do you hope to be doing this in five years? I hope to be happy and I don't care what my job is. At all? I mean, I would. If I'm happy, then who really cares? Yeah, but what if you're like elephant poop scooper? Do I like it? I don't know. Do you? See, maybe that's. Would you favorite. Would you be happy doing this still? Yeah. So being able to do this would be a good. Goal. I'd like to continue, and if I don't want to continue, I hope that I don't continue. Right. That's what I hope for me. How long have you been doing this? Six years. Do you find yourself not wanting to continue anytime soon? No. All right. So just keep on keeping on. That's my goal. Keep on keeping on. Sydney Adams says, how do you decide when to retire a popular sticker or sketchbook postcard because you don't want a ton of products to manage and want to introduce new art you've made? P.S. Keep the six chicken sticker around forever. I love him. I love that they asked me how to retire stuff and they were like don't retire don't retire this one though i have a certain sticker that kind of runs my whole shop that yeah. i honestly don't like that much i retire stuff whenever i want to if i'm sick of it personally it's gone it's up to me it's my business if i don't care if i'm sick of it and i just want to make some money on it and i know other people enjoy it i'll keep it around a little longer than i want it's kind of just balancing the want of your customers and the want of yourself. So when do you decide to introduce new art? Whenever I have time to design it. Uh, is it possible to have too many options? Do you feel like? I do think I have limited storage space for my products and that, that limits me a little bit, so. Would you want more though if you had more storage space? Yeah. Okay, that way you can make that happen. Next question, Madeline says, hi, Lee. Hey, I'm really curious if you've ever done a draw. No. What? Wow. I'm really curious if you've ever done an in-person table slash show. I'm also interested to know if, I'm also interested to know <laughs> what it felt like to sell in the very beginning and what it felt like the biggest learning curve was. 
So oh. have you ever done an in-person table slash show? I have. I've done two and I don't like it. Uh, it's what? a it's a big waste of time and money for me. When was this? Oh, I, I, I got confused. Don't worry about it. Alrighty. I've done two events where I've set up my stuff and sold stuff and I don't like it. I don't like to be locked down to the table, number one. I don't like to pack up my stuff and move it and set it up. Don't like it. I don't make a lot of sales, really. I am much more in tune with my internet community and Cincinnati. I don't think is super interested in what I'm making slash they don't know me. So why would they want to buy my stuff? Do you know any scenarios in which it would be good for someone? Um, I think if you make fan art and you are at a comic convention or an anime convention, that would be good. Yeah. I feel like people sell really well there. I don't make that kind of stuff. If you actually will sell to the audience that's going to show up to the event, yeah. That makes sense. I was trying to think of... Ceramics sell great. Yeah. Ceramics or jewelry. Mm -hmm. People like to try jewelry on. I personally just don't really appeal to the audience here. I really liked selling at the very beginning. It was fun. I had a lot of time. I could package up things with little gift tags and ties and stuff. It was very personal. It was very personalized. I'd write a little note with my orders. Like I went all out. It was so fun. Now it's more of like a job and a to-do and I'm a, I'm a lot more disconnected from the customer. You know, it is what it is. Well, yeah, they were all super, they were commissions. They were commissions for a while. pets and their homes, and then my which mean a lot to them. Mm -hmm. And my first orders for like actual products, I had like 10 orders and I was like, how special are these 10 people? <laughs> um, what I felt like the biggest learning curve was. I don't know. That's fine. I don't know what the biggest learning curve was. I'm sure there is one. But what I do you wish you it. had known sooner? What I wish I'd done at the beginning of my business is talk to an accountant and a bookkeeper right off the bat. Right off the rip. I'm way, 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 way too late. Like You're not too late. Well, I'm moving on to the next question. That's fine. Okay. Lauren says, how do you keep your motivation to stay on a creative path or stay constant in your production? Do you sometimes feel overwhelmed by the businessy tasks? If yes, does it affect your creativity slash motivation? I feel like I kind of answered this in Anusha's question. But do you, like without the businessy things, do you ever lose motivation to stay on your creative path or say stay consistent? No, I love making stuff. If well, I have the opportunity to paint, I'm excited. Sorry. Just stop the video. If okay. you're going to be sniffling this whole time. I'm trying not to. Uh, I'm purposely not sniffling. This is awful. Is it? I'm going to play Animal Crossing instead. Go ahead. Switch is right there. <laughs> I've noticed Lee doesn't ever not really paint. Right. Just always fine with painting. Like you do it almost every day. The only time I can't paint is when I'm too busy with the businessy stuff. If I sh update my shop, I don't have time to paint and I'm actually kind of sad. I think you'll have more time this time. Me personally, I can't stop painting and drawing. Like I'm always thinking, what am I going to make? Addictive personality. Yeah. Huh? Like I'm like, what am I going to make next? That's how I feel sometimes. Yeah, it's like a mystery. It's fun. It sometimes affects my creativity, but not, not most of the time. Amy says, have you ever thought about retirement and what would that look mean to you? Um, I have thought about it and have done nothing. I've been thinking about starting a 401k type thing for myself, but haven't. Um, but otherwise, I've barely thought about it. Allie Wait, says- Wait, what does retirement look like for you? What does that mean to you? Yeah, but what's it also look like? I don't know. I've never been retired. Have you ever met somebody who's been retired? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did what? What they were doing? Does it seem like something you'd like to do? I would like. What do you to, want to be doing when you're fifty? I would like to have a house in nature and paint. Okay. And have some animals. Nice. Okay. What kind of animal? I'm not get, picky. You only get three. I'd like to be surprised. You get three of them. Though. Okay. I'm gonna get a duck. Oh, good choice. Yeah, I like when ducks walk around. Yeah. And I'm going to definitely have a dog. A big dog. How big? Mega. Wow. And, um, hmm, what should be my third? Mm. I don't really want a goat. But Something the, you can hug. 
the goat and the and the duck would be pretty cute together. Yeah, maybe. I love cats. Maybe I should just get a cat. Just get a cat. Okay. I'm allergic, but maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. I would be retired. I would be a different person. Absolutely different person. All right. Allie says, something you know now that you wish you knew when you first started. Honestly, just open to any words of wisdom from someone who actually has been through it. Hey, Lee. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to start my own art adventure. What do you think I should know? Help me. You should know that you should enjoy making art. If you don't enjoy it, don't monetize it. If you do enjoy it and want to monetize it, then do it. If you don't want to monetize it, don't do it. Yeah, I think people often get caught up. It's the same thing that happens to like people who want to start YouTube or just social media in general. Like if you don't like what you're doing, don't do that. Yeah. Like if you don't like to make videos and edit videos and post videos and talk, don't do that. The same with like if you, I guess if you're going to start an art endeavor, if you don't like painting and posting every day, you maybe shouldn't. Like just do what you want to do do mm -hmm. you you can make it what you want that's actually the advice i give to anyone who asks for advice if they should start a youtube channel or not one is no one's watching your channel so you can post whatever you want and do whatever you want and learn and post and delete and no one will know if you like making videos make them but if you don't like making videos don't don't, don't. it's not even fun no editing videos is not fun no so I guess it's like other things in life. Like if you enjoy the process, then yeah, do it. Even mm -hmm. though like there's some things you just don't like about the process for like, like if you're cooking something, there's things you won't like to do, but you like the end result. And mm -hmm. so like you like the process. Same with like, if you're going to start doing stuff, you have to understand that's what you're doing and enjoy it the mm -hmm. best you can. Yeah. And sometimes you don't know before you start. So if mm -hmm. you are sitting there thinking like, I'd like to be on YouTube, I'd like to start an art business, try it out a little bit. Do yeah. as much as you're capable and see if you like it and figure it out. And if you don't like it, that's okay. Also, you do not have to go all in. Mm -hmm. Like my friend, oh, can I go on a tangent? It's sure, not that much yeah. Of one. Let's go off uh, topic. He he started a YouTube channel and he just uses his phone. He didn't like go buy a fancy camera like the way a lot of newer phones are. They're more than good for filming yourself or talking or making videos. So. Mm -hmm. Just use your phone. You don't have to have a special microphone or camera or anything like that. Yeah. Start small. Nothing wrong with that. I feel like a lot of people want to invest like mm -hmm. everything into making the businesses or YouTube channels that they see. Yeah. And they're like, this is the result I want. Let me start with this. But they don't even know if they like it yet. And most of those people did not start there. Mm -hmm. They started much smaller and then grow into it. That was good. Top tip. <laughs> you did a good job. I liked that cooking metaphor. Thanks. That I was... hate cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Carol says, I'd love to know about building an audience for your work. So Lee, what did you do to build your audience? I I feel like I've said this 5,000 times. Well, because people come to you because you have a larger audience okay. and they ask you. So, yeah. So, as you may have known from earlier in this video, I said that I started with commissions. So I was doing pet portraits and home portraits, which was fine. And then I started to hate it. So I decided I wanted to start on my own path, doing my own work. So I did a 365 project where I drew or painted something every day and posted it on Instagram for a whole year. And there is where I found a good amount of my following, not my full following I have now, but it really kickstarted me because people enjoyed watching me learn and watching me grow and they could depend on me to post every day. And I know that's really not realistic for most people, but I had a lot of time and I also had the goal of, I wanna make my own business with my art. So I was willing to do anything. If you want your social media to be your full-time job, the best thing to do is act like it's your full-time job before it is your full-time job. If you don't put full-time energy yeah. and time into it you're not going to get the full-time results so the 365 project was every single day i sat down i was active i took pictures i shared i was also learning how to be a better artist and finding my niche on social media so it was all encompassing project for me but the other thing that really helped me grow my following, especially like a dedicated following, the one that kind of cares about you more, is YouTube. If you have any interest in YouTube, I've found such a good community here and you connect with your audience a lot, a lot tighter. Um, there. Also with how 
you started Instagram so long ago, mm-hmm. um, you could do a lot of similar YouTube things on Instagram now with like IGTV and reels and stuff like that. So people get to know you better. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think it's super good to make like a friend group, like not make it, but like make friends who are in similar. Mm-hmm. If there's like accounts yeah. that have a similar following to you or you've just connected with someone. Vibe. Those connections are so valuable and Instagram's very different now than when I started it. So I don't really know the best way to do it now. Like I guess reels are really great, but I mean, you could do this on any platform if you kind of figure it out a little bit, but also make what you want. If you don't want to make reels, don't make them. I guess people like it. I mean, I like it. If you reach out and like say something nice to somebody, like respond to them. Only Mm -hmm. if you mean it. Yeah, I used to respond to all my comments. I was very on it with and it gets people audience. engaged in what you're doing and they're like oh this is nice mm-hmm. and it's really slow it's just like slow and random and you just have to appreciate the process and also you can't count on it to even work either it's the most discouraging thing to start and decide like i want to grow a following so if you can get a different mindset of like i want to grow as an artist and i'm going to share that that's a much better mindset than what's my count at what's my followers at how many comments have i gotten if you can like change your goal mindset a little bit i guess also don't be discouraged because there are people like lee who have a bigger following if you have 500 people that follow you and let's say 50 to 100 people like what you post that is a lot of people Mm -hmm. 50 to 100 people in a room is a packed room Mm -hmm. and then if you can get a small portion of those people to support you even better Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't feel bad or like you're not doing well like even a few people is good right yes do that okay gray says i know a lot of people start out with stickers and want to buy all the fancy equipment and things how have you decided which big expenses are really worth it and when I didn't ever print my own stickers. I don't like the whole die cut thing. I don't even know how to do it. So that was an easy decision for me. Um, I did invest in a printer because I didn't want to print on demand, mostly because I didn't know starting up my business how many prints to buy. So I wanted to print on demand, but I didn't want to use a service like Society6 or Printful or whatever. So I did invest in a printer after buying the printer. I found out I hate printers so much. And yeah, you fought with the printer a lot. I got rid of it i i despise it i sold it for you you sure did yeah i don't know i mean that's it's just very personal about what you want to invest in and what's important for you what kind of funds you have at what time you know yeah i guess it depends also what your thing is Mm -hmm. like if you edit videos all the time and you do like more visual content, a computer would be good. But if you do lots of prints and stuff like that, it'd be good to print them. Lee went for a long time with a really bad computer. I did. Um, <laughs> I remember when she finally decided to buy a computer, I'm like, cool, it's only like three years late, but yeah, go ahead and buy a computer. She waited forever. Forever. Um, way too long. Way too long to where it was a hindrance. Yeah. Guess don't overbuy. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. Also, similar to like if you're starting something, don't overbuy. You might not even like what you're about to do. Like let's say you get the stuff to make prints and you're like, I don't even like making prints. <laughs> yeah, and then you're I like, did now that. I have a printer. Cool. <laughs> I did it. Yeah. There are companies, I don't know what they are, but I'm sure there's companies you can go through to start. And then if you don't like that, or if you do, if you don't like them, you can do your own thing. But also if you do like selling prints, then maybe. And if you have a local printer, I went and spoke to a local printer and they were a lot more flexible about my quantities and how much they cost rather than an online service. So if you can get in contact with a local printer and you just want to make 25 prints or whatever, they I found that they are much more flexible in product production and helping you and pointing you in the right direction. I guess it doesn't even necessarily have to be local, but just small business in general. Yeah. In case you're in an area that just doesn't support that. Monica says, what product What product were you most surprised by in terms of audience reaction? Was there ever a product that you were hella hyped about, but folks were kind of meh about and vice versa? Most surprised about certain sticker designs blow up in my shop. Mostly the sticker designs that I don't like. The very illustrative, quirky word stickers. 
I have a sticker that says sick and a chicken on a skateboard. That's the one that runs my shop. And then I have an I am artist one that's been in my shop literally since I started it and I've redesigned it. People love those. I guess I'm not that surprised though. I think it's funny though, because if you were to look at like your Instagram feed or like it different doesn't. things, it's not your style. Mm -mm. Like it's just a little bit off. I think the I am artist sticker one is more your style. The sick chicken one looks like nothing. It does not look like you made it. I agree. I'm much more of a painter than an illustrator and yeah. my illustrative stickers do way better. I think that's just what people crave in a sticker. They want like a graphic look. I get it, you know? Um, you sell a lot of that landscape one. I do? Yeah. I love that one. I do too. And it makes me so happy. So that's many people on my like water it. bottle. Yeah. Drink she, up. Which is not illustrative and it's more painting. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorite stickers that I make are the ones oh, that just like I a like painting. I like those, yeah. Which one did you get really hyped about and just didn't do very well? I have one for you. I do? I have a sticker that I like that. I have a print I really like. It's a garden print. It's like a graphite drawing of a house and a garden. I really like that print and it does not do well. Mm. I have so many of it. Can't Oops. get rid of it. I love it though. I don't even feel bad about having it. The one that I like is a newer one that you've made, the ghost and the pumpkin. Mm. It's also not very much your style, no. but I think they're so cool. And like, since they didn't all sell during Halloween, they're probably gonna be here for a minute. Nah, I saw that other ghost sticker all year long. I like that one too. I yeah. have it on my water bottle. There she is. So you never really know. Okay, next question is from Caitlin. They say, I'd love to hear you talk more about shipping and how to figure that out slash prices you charge. I have started an Etsy and it's on vacation mode because shipping is so daunting to me. So there's shipping calculators you can do. Typically, if you're shipping art products or you only have a couple products, you're usually gonna have just a couple size in it, sizes and a couple weights that your products are gonna be when you ship them. So you can just calculate that for different locations and it will tell you how much to charge. And then you add on whatever your shipping materials are and time, whatever you really wanna charge. I charge about $4 for first class mail in the US for just flat cardboard mailers. Internationally, it's like 14 to $17. That's really hard to figure out. Um, I don't have a ton of tips for that besides playing it by ear and calculating for the countries you want to ship to. I think what I would struggle with this, like if I was starting something, are you supposed to weigh each one or you just make up a number? I make up a number. Yeah. So like if... My packages are around like three to five ounces. So I'll just put five or I'll put four. And sometimes I overpay and sometimes I underpay, but they usually don't get sent back to me right. if I'm I a think, little off. Like if I were starting this, I'd be like, am I supposed to actually figure out each one and then price it? But you just pick like the higher or middle mm -hmm. and then just go from there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I had it kind of easy because I did my commissions and I figured out the shipping then. And I wasn't shipping a lot of stuff, but yeah, it's kind of trial and error and you can do a fair amount of research to not have error if you want but you just figure it out along the way or i did okay all right next question taylor says about how much of your monthly income goes into your business purchasing materials shipping operation costs etc i don't know do you want me to guess for you yeah james is, is a numbers guy let's have him guess if i had to guess how often do you buy stickers? I buy stickers and postcards every month for Patreon. That's the most consistent cost I have <clears throat> and the stamps for that. Honestly, you spend very little percent back on your business. I would guess it's less than 10% of okay. your money goes back in. Okay. I, I would agree. Yeah. I mean, people pay their That's own the shipping, even though it is my expense. Technically, uh, my products aren't that expensive to mm -hmm. buy. My shipping materials are more expensive because I buy them from a very eco-friendly company that's a little pricier, but it's a value for me, but it's something I've switched to after making a good amount of money from my business. Yeah, and um, you have a larger volume than some people would have, mm -hmm. so everything just costs less per what you're selling. I remember when I first started helping you, I was like, how much does this cost? How much does this cost? How much do you sell this for? And I was <laughs> trying to figure out how much she makes per everything. Yeah, I would say it's... 10% or less. I think 10% is high. Yeah. It's not a very expensive business. I mean, I buy art supplies, but like they last. Art supplies. They last forever. I spend a lot of money on pencils. Angelina asks, do you make sure you take days off from working, including social media? 
And how do you manage creating and sticking to your own deadlines when it comes to creating something for your shop? One thing I struggle with is time management. I have so many ideas, but struggle to implement things because time seems to pass by so quickly. I do try to take days off. I usually will take weekend days off, kind of. Um, I play it by ear. Sometimes I take days off in the middle of the week. I don't have a regimented schedule, but I do have some sort of mental balance of knowing when I need a day off or just wanting a day off. And that's the beauty of being a freelance artist. Lee seems to uh, just vibe. I do seem to do that. She's not one to like, she will make a list of things to do, but like her list of things to do just has four things on it. <laughs> and there's no timeline, nothing. It's just those <laughs> things need to be done. And then also Lee seems to be one who will just do work before chilling and relaxing. You don't seem to put work off. You're just like, well, I gotta get to do this next. And then once you get to the point where you don't wanna do it, you're like, I'm gonna take a break. Yeah, I don't have a lot of trouble with time management. Okay, I don't have a lot of <laughs> I don't have a lot of trouble with time management. I don't use any sort of scheduling thing besides a very weak calendar that I barely look at. Besides to check what day it is. Mm -hmm. I would say if you don't have the mindset or mentality that Lee has, it is good to make deadlines though for yourself. Mm -hmm. I guess it could be hard when you're creating, but like I need to do this by the end of the week. Um, and some people like. I do well if I have a daily to-do list because I also just think I need to do this, 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 this. I need to get these all done before the end of the week. And then I'll go into the day and I'm like, What's wow, priority? which one am I going to do? What's priority? What's today like? Yeah. How am I? Um, yeah. So if you do struggle with that, I would make a daily to-do list and then a weekly one. And you can even have a monthly one. I have a monthly to-do list and yeah. that's kind of it. And then I'll make mini, mini daily yeah, ones. Yeah, even her monthly one has like nothing on it. Oh, that's my monthly one. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, so I'll, I'll pull tasks from it, whatever my mood is. I have plenty of time to get my things done. And if I don't, it's really not a disaster. I just don't really care <laughs> much. That's the other thing too. Lee doesn't have any hard deadlines. Like there's nothing. The, Only Patreon. Yeah, Patreon, which you get done weeks ahead. I have a monthly turnaround on Patreon and I just started working with sponsors. So I have a little bit of a deadline there. Yeah, and then our the podcast is a podcast, deadline. Yeah. That one actually is kind of hard for me. Yeah. Mostly like because we're collabing. I hate collabing. Next question. Vero says, how much do you think social media and social response from viewers shaped the way you do art? Is it difficult to do art for growth slash personal enjoyment slash style development when you know that there's an easy option of making hmm. what you know already works? I have adored the recent painting experiments you've shared with us recently. That's a great question. I love this question. It's good. I think this is very relatable for a lot of people, but isn't asked a lot. I think social media and social response have shaped my work a lot. More than I care to admit, I still feel this and I'm trying to break free of it by making landscapes nonstop right now for some reason. I think that that's going to break it. <laughs> so you can keep moving the mic, but when you move it, I do hear it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Don't be mean to me. Okay. <laughs> um, I know for a fact that my animal paintings do exponentially better than my landscape paintings until now. It has shaped my whole social media experience, though I do enjoy making the stuff that does well too. It's very difficult to make stuff that I know isn't gonna do well and still share it when I know I am very capable of making something that will do really, really well. I think it's just a personal choice. Yeah. Same way I've talked to Lee about this, like people who make music, some people want to make music that is different, which might not get as big of a following when they know they could just make music that sounds like other music and it would do really well. So it's just a personal choice. And if you're willing to maybe have less of a viewership. I guess you need to assess your values before you decide like what path you want to take or if you want to choose the path at all. Yeah, you can also balance it too by like doing the doing things both. that yeah, doing the things people like but then also doing the other things and you'll get more viewers and more people on the other thing that might possibly like it. Mm -hmm. I guess it's deciding what your goal is if your goal is growth only. Yeah. Personal growth make whatever you want. If your goal is social media growth, that's a hard one. Because yeah. people want to follow you for what you love. And if you're not making what you love, it's kind of obvious. So there's a very delicate balance there. It's kind of like the beginning of Kingdom Hearts. 
It's kind of like the beginning of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, you have to choose your path. In Kingdom Hearts, you have to choose your path. You have three options. Yeah. And it shapes the game for you. Maybe. So, Who knows? choose wisely. I just read that choosing the shield is the best option. I just did it for the first time. Seems to be working. It does seem yeah. to be working. I'm slain. Yeah. Anyways. Next question is from Meadow. Would you recommend Etsy for starting a shop or are there other platforms that you know of for selling art? I've been thinking about trying to sell art through Instagram to start. So I was on Etsy literally six years ago or more and it was not populated. There weren't weird fees. It was really easy to use. And I left right when they implemented the fees and the weird algorithm on the search engine. Me personally, I would not be on Etsy. I know it's really nice to have just an audience that's searching on a platform and you have your stuff for sale on there and they can find you, but I don't really know how truly valuable that is anymore. So I can't say that I recommend it. If it was me starting out, I would want to start my own shop. I love having the personalization features like Shopify or um, what's the other one? Shopify and something else, Big Cartel. Those are a little more personalized but you don't get the search engine. You have to demand, depend more on audience finding you and then wanting to buy your project. Demand. Pro depend. You, you corrected it, but it's funny you said demand. Yeah. Maybe I was trying to say demand. Maybe. I like the idea of selling on Instagram. I kind not of through, like Not it. through their feature. Like I would try to like what Sell you said. Sell on the stories. You could do that like what Caroline does mm -hmm. is like she will, you just message them. Yeah. If she's taking commissions, it. that's yeah. a good way to do commission work, I think. Yeah. Well, and then sometimes she'll, she makes rugs and then sometimes right up there. Yeah. Like there's a one right in the corner. You can't see it at all. All right. Perfect. But sometimes you'll have some that she just made and then she'll post it up and be like, if you want it, message me mm -hmm. and we'll figure it out. I think that's a good way to start. Especially if you're just starting. Like if you're selling five to 10 things, that's super manageable. And then you just go through PayPal and just ship it to that person. You'll know when you need to move onto a platform. I feel like, like if it's too hard to manage the messages or people are like, Hey, where can I actually buy this stuff? Where can I actually look to shop? People will start asking you and you'll be like, Oh, I guess I'll start a website. Yeah. I think that's good. Okay, Kaylin says, I feel like having an audience is necessary to start, but also it takes so long to build that up, at least for me. Would love your perspective on what you do differently if you were starting today. So like, let's say you just started the Instagram. Okay. What would you do? I would go on TikTok. Yeah? And like- I would do TikTok trends. Trends? There's like trends, there's audio trends, there's like, you you make videos that goes with the audio or, yeah. you know like make relatable content to get myself out there. That's probably what I would do right now. Instagram kind of sucks right now. Yeah, you could just, I mean, you'd have to be able to do video and edit, but like, so like if you were to do one, you would just edit videos to do TikTok audio things, mm -hmm. and then also have a place potentially where people could buy what they just saw. I think if I was starting over and I really wanted to excel fast, I would be on TikTok and I would be on YouTube. Videos are hard, but if you're capable of doing them, I think it's more fruitful than a photo on Instagram these days. I don't know how Twitter is now. I've never Some used artists it. really like using Twitter. I've heard mixed reviews, but it might be a better photo platform. Hmm. But TikTok blows you up if you get a couple of trends going yeah. and make relatable content. If you get into the right audience, like you get a lot of exposure there. That's what I would do. Did that answer? Kind of. I what feel like the audience is necessary. Uh huh. Cell says, I'd love some insight on how you source your manufacturing companies for various products. Uh, I'm not very good at this. I definitely ask my friends on Instagram and artists mutuals who <laughs> they go to. I ask the friends I have on Instagram that do my same job where they get their stuff. That's mostly how I figure it out. I'm not good at doing my own research. I get really overwhelmed. Talking to people in person scares me. So I'm not super great at this. I really depend on others to help me. So I guess, unfortunately, you kind of just have to ask. Yeah, you have to ask, but it's it's possible to find your own. Yeah. I have found my own. I just didn't like the ones I found. It's a hard process. Everything feels like you were choosing the wrong thing until you get your products because you never know, especially online. I feel like this is also part of having a good group like a circle of other artists who you can relate to who are in similar positions and maybe similar content. I mean, if you don't mind talking to people, finding anything local will probably benefit you. 
because you'll be able to tangibly touch the things that will be printed on or speak to the person who's making your stuff. I did that a little bit, but haven't followed through yet because I am scared of him. Next question, Esther says, love your work, Lee. Thanks. I would like to know how you organize your mindset on this sketch is for fun slash this could potentially be a print sticker, etc. Is there something that sparks on the image that makes you see it as a product or do you use reactions and opinions of your public to decide what to make as an object? Thanks and matcha hugs. I saw that matcha Green hugs. tea hugs. I pretty much always make art just to make art. I try not to make art for a product because when I'm thinking about making a product and I'm drawing it, things don't go well. Bad time. Lee messes up. She can't use her brain anymore. Broken. Doesn't work. Um, I have done it a couple times, like the ghost I designed, I designed to be a sticker. And I do use my audience's opinion to gauge what should be a product and what shouldn't, but I also use my own, because sometimes people don't have the same vision as me, but once I present it as the final product, people are like, okay, yeah, that was a good idea. So you need to just take the feedback with a grain of salt and also believe in yourself to know that you can make a product that is good without people really knowing before you make it. I also feel like you have a very different way of making art than somebody else might it comes to like commercial things. Like Lee doesn't sit down, am I, I could be wrong, with like a yep, prompt. No idea. Yeah. But like somebody, nobody comes to you and like, hey, can you make me this? Right. And then you have to sit down and make it. Yeah. Even when she was doing commissions, there was a picture. So she just had to like go off of like that to make it her own. But I guess it'd be hard for you to relate. What was it? What do you want to know? The question? Is there something that sparks on the image that makes you see it as a product? Do you use reactions or opinions? About. I don't know what you're talking about either. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think you're pretty much you don't sit down to make things to sell. No, I don't have goals. I just make artwork. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. You never know these God days. God forbid. <laughs> Next question is from Zia. They say, does it feel weird to monetize your passion? Personally, no. I don't mind it at all. I think it's very fun, but I do understand other people feeling this way. Um, I guess if, if I did feel this way, or for somebody that does feel that way, I would try to remember it as it's not selling your passion, it's people supporting your passion. Mm -hmm. It's people who want to support you and want you to do well and be able to continue doing what they love to see. So I know there's um, a certain type of artist that will create art like a diary. Like it's very important, it's very personal, it's very vulnerable, it's part of them. And I think that's the kind of artist that is it's harder for them to monetize it and make it into a product to sell. It feels very impersonal and it feels like throwaway-ish and more invaluable than how they created their art. I get that, but for me, I just make things that I think are pretty and I have almost no attachment to them. So that's personal, I guess. Yep, James has no thoughts on that. I do have thoughts. Even if it's very personal <laughs> art for you, people would like to see it. Yeah, at least you could like uh, film you painting it. That's monetizing it. People also like, I mean, it's up to you, but like people like to see your personal, if they like you, like what you're thinking and how you feel and the yeah. personal things. Yeah. Next question is from Regina. Would love to hear about your experience using Patreon and or how you initially started making money through your artwork also. What does your shipping mailing process look like? How to get started? I made a whole video about Patreon, how I started, what it would look like. You can check out that video. I started Patreon. I literally didn't know what it was. Hmm. Didn't know. I saw other artists doing it. I clicked on it. I built my profile. Didn't know what I was doing. Opened it. But I also had almost no following. And then I just built it from there. That's how I do most things. I just kind of jump in and then learn. I don't plan things. I don't like to plan things. And if things don't work out, I get rid of them. And Patreon ended up working out. Initially, I made money through my commissions, um, my mailing and shipping process. I have a video about my packaging supplies, which you can check out that might be helpful. I don't know how to describe what it looks like. Your mailing slash shipping process? Yeah. Lee gets a list of orders and I pack them. Yeah. So I think that's good. <laughs> Sienna says, hi. 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 
How are you able to find yourself as an artist while wanting to please your audience? Thank you. My number one goal is finding myself as an artist and that inherently pleased my audience. Yeah, I was gonna say, fortunately for you, what you like to do, people like. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really not fun thing to talk about that what you're doing, people just might not like it, yeah. even if you like it. And that's, I think that's the, those are the thoughts that taunt artists. Like they're questioning, they're like, do people even like this? My audience isn't growing. Yeah. I must be doing a bad job. I don't know what to say. For so that. how do you, how do you not feel that way? Do you like your art? That's it's, what's important. If you're doing it because you like it, mm -hmm. you have to, uh, you have to just not care. Love your art. Yeah. And I wouldn't say I've loved my art all the time, but I do consistently share it regardless and from there i can learn from myself too like my audience can help me know what is good and what isn't in a certain way yeah i don't like that aspect of life i don't either it's for like any other passion you might have that's creative like if you make music and people just don't like it and you're like but i love this right and videos like you can yeah. make a video every day and people might not like them. This is a short story, but there's a guy who was in a band and he paid for an ad in Rolling Stone. He paid a bunch of money, like his life savings. Cause he was like, so many people see Rolling Stones. If I put an ad in it, somebody has to buy my album. Nobody bought his album. What the? Because they just didn't like it. And just because you put it in front of a bunch of people doesn't mean they have to like it. Like some people just, I don't know. I don't mm. like that. Because I love when people are passionate about what they do. So mm -hmm. I just want them to, to succeed. But just because you're passionate doesn't mean you succeed. And this is like going oh. against all the advice we've given so far too. Yeah. Like we're like, as long as you're passionate, people will love to see that, which is true, but mm. it might not gain you success. <sighs> so I mean like we as two people can't give you advice around this. It's just a reality that happens it is yeah i don't like it but there's definitely people who are successful and mm, it's kind of chance yeah and i guess that's also that balance part where like doing what you love versus what people like and mm -hmm. if you're willing to make a compromise for that and what that compromise looks like it's for also you. it's really hard to gauge like where you're at in that too like am i pleasing people right now do they like this am i pleasing myself right now so like where do you prioritize i don't know. i also feel like it this is a lot of topic it there's a lot of work you can put in but it's also luck mm -hmm. like just being in front of the right people and the right post does well and then more people see it and that happens a couple more times and then it's like anything else like you can't even have it happen if you don't try mm -hmm. so try i don't know i'm not an artist I'm just a boy. But you have also tried to do a couple. I'm, I'm being generous by saying a couple. James has tried a few different business ventures that haven't gone well, but he did try it. Oh, yeah. That's my biggest regret is if I wouldn't try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like not trying. Right. Because then you don't know. I'd rather fail and be like, well, at least I tried. I kind of did it. Yeah. And then you're sure. Yeah. You're not like, what if I had tried? And you should know when to stop. Like if you no longer feel connected to the idea or the goals don't seem desirable to you or maybe your thoughts are going to different career paths or life paths, you should, you'll know. Yeah, I, I agree. Kind of answered the question. Yeah. Jani says, I skimmed a lot of the questions people have posted, but would love if you did a multi-part series if you ended up not getting around to answering all the questions you had responses for still an option yeah you're gonna want to do that okay their question is how do you figure out how to price your items i'm curious oh you don't know no wow let me inform the masses Go ahead. i just nicknamed you masses i'm masses <laughs> so i will go to other artists websites and see how they you price thief. their stuff mm-hmm I don't want to undersell my things and I don't want other people to seem like they're overselling their things because I want the artist community to be um, valuable. So if I can use other people's prices to navigate my own, I'll do it. That's regular business. Yep. 
Yeah, we um, do the same thing for automotive. I think it's really easy to undersell your artwork because you don't put a ton of money into it. It's more time and... <sighs> I'm talking. Sorry. It's more time and skill and materials than like, I put in $30 to this painting. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of need to compare. Yeah, I had something to say, now I can't remember. Did you sneeze it out? I coughed. Did you cough it out? Yeah. Cough it up, James. <laughs> the same's for automotive. Just because it's easy for me doesn't mean it'd be easy for you. And it doesn't mean what I'm doing isn't valuable. Uh, the reason it's easy for me is because I've taken so long to become good at it and I have the tools. Same with art. If you're buying art, it's probably because you couldn't make it and you didn't think of it and you enjoy what they made and it makes mm -hmm. you feel a certain way which is worth something like if you think about it like three dollars for a sticker can be expensive but also if that three dollar sticker makes you happy i'd pay three dollars to be happy anytime and as you continue selling stuff you'll kind of figure out if you need to lower or raise your prices like yeah. it'll just it'll click in your brain of like oh i think i'm underselling this i'm selling too much of it or i'm not really selling this maybe i should lower the price yeah, supply and demand. Supply and demand. <laughs> Economics. 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 Charlotte says, how did you find your art style and confidence in your own work? I guess this relates to how you then built a small business for yourself. Also, do you exper experience, I wanted to say experiment so bad. Also, do you experience having to say no to things you don't want to do like job opportunities or commissions in order to not overload yourself with work if so how do you find balance and feel that you are enough slash you are on the right track i hope that's not ambiguous hugs and tisses ox all right reread it <laughs> how did you first find your art style and confidence in your, in your own work um that that references back to my 365 project which is helpful and then i also make art all the time which is how you find your art style very very popular question and my answer is i hope that you like making art because you're gonna have to make a lot of it i guess having a self-awareness would be good too what do you mean uh it'd be very easy to copy somebody's style without trying mm -hmm. and i see it happen all the time yeah so you have to be aware because mm -hmm. you can do that challenge 365 and end up with someone else's style. That's true. Yeah. I see it happening. The next question was, do you experience having to say no to things you don't want to do, like job opportunities or commissions, in order to not overload yourself with work? Um, yeah, I say no to everything. Lee just says no to anything she doesn't want to do at this point. Yeah, so I kind of have that luxury at this point in my job. I mm -hmm. will say, if you don't want to do it, you shouldn't, unless the reward is just... When I was doing Ridiculous. commissions, I didn't want to do them, but I did them. Yeah. Um, when my commissions got a little more populated and I had to kind of close my commissions for times, I would choose which artworks I wanted to do. So it depends on what point you are in your opportunities, how many opportunities you're getting, and how they will help you on your... Yeah. In automotive, we would do life. jobs we would never want to do, but yeah. it pays. So, mm -hmm. and if you want to be a mechanic or an artist or whatever it may be, sometimes you have to do the jobs that other people don't want to do that you might not even want to do. But that's like I said, at some point in this, just having to, having to enjoy the process, even if it's a grind. I, I usually say no to everything. Um, how do you find balance and feel that you are enough slash on the right track? I just believe I'm on the right track. I always have believed it. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I definitely feel like ups and downs about my artwork. Like, is my art actually good? I always feel like I am doing the right thing at the right time. Because why not? Uh, well, <laughs> because why not would be if things are, aren't going well. So right. things are going well. So you feel like you're on the right track. But I guess, how do you know things are going I've well? had things go badly. And you know okay. what I do? I quit. Oh, yeah. Love a good quit. Feels good to quit sometimes. I'd love to quit stuff if I don't like it, if it's not working, if I'm not benefiting from it. Quit. I quit. <laughs> I quit a big collaboration with uh, Mazri. Um, it wasn't working for me. I hated it. It was putting me into a deep depression. Quit. Um, let me nice, dude. Yeah. I was doing commissions and I hated them. They were making me a lot of money, but I couldn't stand it anymore. I quit. Well, you were able to quit after a certain point. Yeah. I built up my business 
so I could quit. Was your boss mad? Oh yeah, she was, oh, oh my gosh, I can't even talk about that. What else have I quit? Yeah, I quit CrossFit, I quit Contra. School. Oh, I quit school, that's a good one. I knew school wasn't for me, didn't like it. I tried it three times. You just kind of know. Believe in your balance and believe in what you think and feel about the things you're doing. Reflect on yourself. I think things will be okay. I mean, things will be okay. Yeah, it's okay to quit. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to keep trying at something that's not doing well. Yeah. Like if you love doing the thing that's not doing well, I mean, at least you love it. Michelle says, do you believe that positive mindset is important to be a full-time artist? If so, did you cultivate this or do you naturally have a positive mindset about whether you can be a full-time artist? That was a good transition, huh? It's a good question. I was just talking about that. Were you? What? Yeah, just I, now? I believed that things are going to go well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, How did you cultivate that? I do think a positive mindset is important. Sometimes you got to fake it. Um, Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, you got to fake it. Everyone says it, fake it till you make it, but like, they're kind of right. I will fake it so hard till I make it that I believed it the whole time. For instance, I act like I know how to do art and maybe I don't. Yeah, um, James and I started a podcast recently and act like we know how to podcast and we don't. Or do we? Um, but I do think just thinking positively is important. How did I cultivate, cultivate this? Like a plant. Hmm. Um, I, I, I could. Know. I would say avoiding things you don't want to do. Also having a good outside work life. Yeah, having a community that, that builds you up is important. When I started my business, I was living with my mom and she wasn't overly supportive, but I pitched her the idea and showed her my Etsy and she was like, this is cool. And mostly everyone I showed it to was like, this is cool. Good for you, Lee. Great, great idea. And that made me believe it, though I believed like Naruto. it before. Yeah, believe it. I would think if you don't like your outside life, it would affect your art. Mm -hmm. Like if you can't, if you're not taking care of yourself, how are you going to take care of a self-initiated job? knowledge bomb yeah knowledge bomb maybe luckily i had a lot of time to take care of myself and prioritize that it's not inherently hard for me which i'm so grateful for i know it's hard for other people and that's not a situation i've really been in so it's hard for me to speak on that i don't know james yeah lee could you uh help me out <laughs> what am i helping with help how do you cultivate a positive mindset you have to realize for art or in life? I don't think it will apply to anything. Mm. Just give us something, please. Well, what I do is I just tell myself how much I love life. And then I'm like, God, I love life. And so like, if I was then to go paint, I'd be like, God, I love painting. I like, get to paint. Yeah. I I've got hands and eyes and I get to paint. Let's say it's not your full-time job. If you get to do it sometimes or make any money from it, uh, you're winning. You you're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so even really really small wins would make me positive. Even if it even if you're not selling anything, if people start to like your stuff, even if it's a couple people, you're like, yeah, progress. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like not looking at the finish line, but looking at all the little things you're doing to get there, which would make it worth it and keep you positive. Mm -hmm. Dang, that was pretty good. Nice. James just pulled that out of his little pocket. Yeah, I have two pockets. This is our last question. Our, our questions? Are these only for me? Yeah, these are yours. Okay, last question. This is that name I can't say. Iolin? Uh -huh. I's and L's are weird. Mm -hmm. Last question. What was canceling the Masri art kit like? What was the process involved with it before that? So if you don't know, I signed on to do a Masri art kit with Masri, which is a sketchbook brand. And we were going to create a line of products, some sketchbook covers. I was going to make kind of some tutorials, like a how-to book type thing. Um, I signed on to the commitment and I told them I was very hesitant. I was like, I don't know how to teach people to do art, but this sounds good. What do you think? And they're like, well, I'll help you teach people how to do art. And it turned out they didn't really help me. They were really expecting me to do like some color theory stuff and some things I just don't understand and things really outside of my process. I had deadlines every week. You know by now in this point of the video that I don't do deadlines. I was just stressed. I felt like I couldn't complete the 
task they were asking me to do and the deadlines were frightening. I was terrified, scared. Mm -hmm. My friends were watching me go down a rabbit hole of anxiety and depression and everyone was encouraging me to quit. So I emailed Mazuri. Actually, I had my roommate Allie email Mazuri. I had her type up an email for me to quit. She wrote a very nice business-like and Mazuri took it great. They were just like, we understand you need to take care of yourself. They offered me a couple options of if I wanted to stay on or not um, for a smaller project since I'd already created some art for them. And I was like, nah, and that was that. So it wasn't a crazy process. And if you are in a commitment, you want to quit and you are able to, maybe you should do it. It's really hard to say no. I felt a lot of guilt saying no. I felt kind of failure-ish because I couldn't do things that I felt like I wasn't able to do. I agreed to it thinking I could face the challenge and then I started doing it and how do you feel now hard i'm so glad i quit it so maybe if it doesn't feel like the right choice then know that it could be later yeah i should have gone with my gut you did well not in the first place at the end at the end yeah i was a little late but better late than never i always say you say that every day every day <laughs> uh, that's our last question wow i hope that these questions and answers were in some way helpful for you um, I think they helped me a lot. Are you serious? Okay. Thank you to my patron for giving me these questions to answer. Maybe this will be another series. I have literally 80 plus questions and I answered maybe 20. Maybe. But thank you for watching this video. If you did like it or found it helpful, subscribe to my channel. I post awesome videos. Uh, so, so good. Better than any video you've ever seen. Like the video. It helps mucho if you like helping and care about the world you might want to like the video my name's lee you can follow me on instagram or whatever you don't have to this is james <laughs> we have a podcast together and called yeah maybe podcast if you want to check that out if you kind of enjoyed our banter it's a little more lighthearted than this video is so. it's much more <laughs> um thanks for coming i hope that you stayed hydrated if you didn't keep Whoops. up okay Bye. All right, goodbye. You have to wave. And now you have to dance. I have to blow my nose.